Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's tag video is the writing rituals tag, which was in my recommended section from a writer named Mandy Lynn. I haven't ever watched her before. That sounds mean, but you know, you find people sometimes in the YouTube recommendations when they get it right. YouTube doesn't always get it right, but I was actually looking thinking, manifesting a writing tag and it happened. So I probably clicked on something and it, you know, because YouTube can't yet read your mind. Or maybe they can. I don't know, but my recommendations aren't always on point. So I'm going to go with the less creepy version and they can't read your mind yet. So I'm going in order this time without the cauldron because it's being currently cleaned in the dishwasher. <laughs> Oops. Also, just to point out, if there's any background noise, it's the dumpster truck that decided to come on a random Sunday and I don't understand it, but I've been waiting for like 10 minutes for it to go away and it hasn't gone away. So. I don't have the patience to wait it out. <laughs> I want to do this tag. Number one, when do you write? I usually write in the afternoon or evenings. I'm not a morning person, so I'm not, I'm just not gonna write in the morning. It would be trash, really smelly trash if I wrote <laughs> in the morning. So afternoon, weekends, weekdays, nights, sometimes past 10 p.m. Though I've gotten older and I can't really write late at night anymore, so that's why I go with evenings. Max would be 10 p.m. After 10 p.m., I'm gonna be sleepy at my desk and then it's just not gonna make sense. So i rather have writing that I can work with versus I just need to delete all of this because I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> Number two, how do you seclude yourself from the outside world? And this is a weird question. <laughs> I don't know how this has anything to do with writing, but maybe because if you're like easily distracted, then you have to seclude yourself. And I don't need to, I just write in my office at my desk. I'm not that distracted. Considering that I have ADHD, I'm not that easily distracted that I need to barricade myself in an office and have no one speak to me whatsoever or else I can't write. Yeah, I'm not like that. I'm, I'm pretty bouncy and pretty easy to go with the flow that include my fiance coming in and checking on me or maybe like a phone call or a text or a stupid dump truck outside that won't stop dumping whatever it's doing. Number three, how do you review what you wrote the previous day? I don't. <laughs> I'm drafting. I do not ever go back. If it's an active draft, I'm not going back. The only time I would go back Actually, I went back this time with my fourth book, it's an urban fantasy crime book, because I haven't opened it for a year, so I have no idea what was going on. So I went back and read it and I did some tweaking and all that stuff. But from this point on, writing the draft, now that I know what's going on, because I haven't opened it for such a long time, and I was a little like, eh, don't want to mess this up. Now I'm not going back at all. I'm not even going back because I realized that I have a bunch of typos in let's say chapter seven that I need to fix. No, that's gonna be fixed in draft two. The first draft is just writing it and I don't care what it looks like type of thing. It needs to just be done. I can't go back and forth. It That's a waste of time for me because I will not stop myself from going back and just trying to make it perfect. That's not the point of the first draft for me. It can't be perfect. First drafts are never perfect, so there's no point. So I just keep going until it's the end of the book, and then I'll wait about six weeks, and then I'll go back. 
Number four, what song is your go-to when feeling uninspired? And that would be just Lana Del Rey in general. I don't have a specific song or anything though. Yeah, Lana Del Rey or um, Celtic music. Usually Celtic war music is really good. Get you pumped up. And also metal. Number five, what do you always do when you find yourself struggling with writer's block? And that would be read. Just read a lot. Give myself a break, like a few days break. Talk it out with writers and non-writers, mainly readers, because they have a different view of books. And I think that's really important to get uh, that information, especially when you're stuck. But after a certain point, like a week or two, two weeks max, I'm sitting my butt down in the chair and I'm writing no matter what. Now, does that include wine? Yes, but you know, you just, I think a lot of it has to do regarding writer's block is you're so tense and you're so stressed out and you want it to be perfect and you want it to be this or that or it has to be this way. Oh, but it can't be this way because halfway through the book something happens. I don't know. Like just the stress of it, making it perfect the first time or the second time, whatever, you know, however you write or wherever you are in the writing process, I think messes stuff up for you and you that's why you get the block. So I try to decompress and not take it seriously. I think the biggest thing is to not take your first or second, honestly, draft so seriously because you're not gonna get perfection in the first or second draft. I know a few writers that can get a great book in this draft too, but I would say the majority of the time, you're going like three, four, five, six, seven, eight drafts. There's nothing wrong with that. I think you just need to make it fun again, make it less stressful. And that's my approach to beating writer's block. Number six, what tools do you use when you're writing? Scribner, Sangria, Word. <laughs> I'm not really sure what like they mean as tools, but I'm gonna go with those three. Number seven, what's the one thing you can't live without during a writing session? Water or else I will be dehydrated and I will just feel like crap. And it's happened many times before. When I was younger, I would go six hours just writing and six hours without water, mm, not good, it's <laughs> not good. I felt like death incarnate and I'm pretty sure my breath was like death incarnate, you know, and that's not good. Not good. Number eight, how do you fuel yourself during your writing session? Water, like I said. Two, I do actually have full meals <laughs> when I'm writing for long periods. Like anything three or more hours, I'm gonna have a meal, which would be like ramen. That's usually when I take a break. So I'm eating but I'm not writing. I'm I'm eating and I'm watching YouTube videos or, you know, talking to friends or something like that. And that's my mini break. And I think that's really important. Lastly, how do you know when you're done writing? I guess this is very vague. Like, do you mean writing the book or at the end of each writing session? Okay, I'm just going to answer both of them. The, the end of the each writing session is when I can't write anymore <laughs> because I'm really tired and that includes editing as well if I'm really tired it's done we're not going anywhere more with this or else it's just going to be jargon and jumbles and it won't make sense when I'm finishing a book I know even as a pantser the beginning and the end so when I hit the end of the story then it's done <laughs> like because I already know what the end is going to be like I have to fill in in the middle and that's always the most annoying part for me the middle because I know the beginning and the end but I just need to get to the end but when I get to the final end of the book then it is what it is and I just let it sit there for the six weeks and then I go back and 
look, the book is never going to be perfect. You're not going to please everyone and you're going to get negative reviews no matter what. All the fantastic books out there, subjective, but let's just say, you know, fill in the blank your favorite books. They have bad reviews as well. It's when the writer feels like it's done and the editor feels like it's done and also the beta readers feel like it's done, then it's done. And you can't really do much else to make it perfect because there's just no such thing. You just have to accept that. But I think the beauty of art is that it's not perfect and it never will be. And that's the human race in a nutshell. We're never going to be perfect and aiming for perfection I'm just gonna give you a lot of anxiety <laughs> probably depression too because you're never gonna get there big picture art is not perfect but that's why it's important thank you so much for watching my writing rituals tag have a great rest of your writing and reading day bye